Groundbreaking fusion result. The good news and the bad news. 22nd of the 12th, 2022. The promise of superabundant, very low carbon energy generation has spurred tremendous scientific and engineering efforts. Aiming to generate and tap into the incredible forces of nuclear fusion in the face of daunting technical challenges. It's been 90 years since nuclear fusion was first experimentally demonstrated in the lab, and 84 years since the very first failed attempt to build a fusion reactor. For decades, the holy grail quest for fusion power researchers has been to trigger fusion ignition that exceeds the energy break-even point under controlled conditions. The good news. So, there's been justified excitement over a recent experimental fusion breakthrough at the US National Ignition Facility, NIF, where, for the first time ever, a research team managed to get more energy output from a fusion reaction than the energy input to start it. In a process called Inertial Confinement Fusion, ICF, scientists use an array of 192 UV lasers to hit a pea-sized gold-plated cylinder containing a diamond-coated capsule of frozen deuterium and tritium, DT, with 2.05 megajoules of energy, roughly equivalent to two one-ton trucks, each moving at 100 mile per hour, colliding head-on. The gold walls of the cylinder convert the UV to X-rays, and that X-ray pulse collapsed the capsule with a massive pressure wave that raised the fuel mix temperature to over 150 million degrees Celsius, 10 times hotter than the sun's core. This ignited reactions that fused the DT hydrogen isotopes into helium and released 3.15 megajoules of output energy, 54% more energy than the initial pulsed laser input. This is a genuine milestone, a practical proof of possibility for fusion science. However, some pundits have hailed this positive breakthrough as the beginning of a clean fusion power generating revolution, which brings us to the bad news. Unfortunately, there is still a long way to go before nuclear fusion generation begins powering human civilization. The NIF device itself. Firstly, the NIF device was never designed to operate as an efficient commercial power generator. Instead, the design team focused on creating the largest laser array they could build to provide data for the USA's nuclear weapons stockpile research program. NIF's 192 lasers drank up 322 megajoules of energy in the process of generating a laser ignition pulse that was less than one 150th of that power. To demonstrate that laser array ICF fusion could be a viable method of energy production, the overall yield efficiency, energy out versus energy in, would have to jump up by two or three orders of magnitude. Also, the pulse rate of the laser array would have to increase dramatically, and the NIF device would need a major redesign with mechanisms to quickly clear the target chamber and rapidly replace the fuel cylinder target. The extreme scarcity of tritium. Secondly, it's true that there are several different fusion reactor designs currently in research and development, including the $22 billion International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, a giant multinational tokamak reactor that will use magnetic confinement to contain its superheated reaction plasma within its toroidal, donut-shaped, vacuum chamber. However, what most current reactor designs have in common with both ITER and the NIF device is the DT fuel mix they use. And that presents a major problem, because tritium is extremely rare. The most common isotope of hydrogen, protium, has a single lone proton for its nucleus, whereas the stable isotope, deuterium, has a nucleus containing one proton 
and one neutron. Deuterium is reasonably abundant. Roughly one in 5,000 hydrogen atoms in Earth's oceans are deuterium. In contrast, tritium has one proton and two neutrons in its nucleus and is extremely rare on Earth, with only trace amounts found in the atmosphere, arising from cosmic ray bombardment. Tritium's rarity is exacerbated because it is unstable. It undergoes beta decay with a radioactive half-life of only 12.3 years. So there's only about 25 kilograms, 55 pounds, of usable tritium on Earth right now. And that global stockpile is expected to peak below 30 kilograms before 2030, after which it will decline. This is because the majority of the world's tritium supply occurs as a byproduct from the aging fleet of Canada deuterium uranium nuclear fission reactors. There are less than 20 of these can do reactors still in active use in Canada and South Korea, and many are due to be decommissioned over the next four decades. Furthermore, ITER is expected to consume one kilogram of tritium per year once it begins running DT experiments. Despite tritium scarcity, DT remains a popular fusion fuel because DT fusion reactions can be ignited in lab conditions at the relatively low temperature of 150 million Celsius. There are alternative fusion fuel mixes, such as deuterium and helium-3, which can be made to undergo fusion at 200 million Celsius. But helium-3 is also extremely rare, at only one per one million of the helium atoms in Earth's atmosphere. Alternatively, common hydrogen, protium, and boron are plentiful, and they will undergo fusion together, forming common helium-4. But it requires a temperature of one billion degrees Celsius to ignite their fusion reaction. And humanity has never built a reactor to run at such an extremely high temperature. Hence the hope for future DT fusion power plants is pinned on two measures. Firstly, the efficient recapture and recycling of the 99% of tritium that does not undergo fusion in any given burn. This is a serious challenge in itself because tritium is notorious for permeating and leaking out of metal walled containment. Secondly, breeding more tritium inside the fusion reactor itself. To achieve this, the toroidal plasma vessel will be lined with a lithium blanket. And when lithium is struck by neutrons emitted by DT fusion, it's split into tritium and helium. Unfortunately, DT fusion alone won't produce enough neutrons for purpose. So designers are incorporating neutron multipliers into the plasma vessel's lithium blanket. Neutron multipliers such as beryllium, which emits two neutrons for every one it absorbs. And there's the rub. Tritium breeding like this is still untested, but it's a mission critical challenge that must be met. Otherwise, DT fusion technology could fizzle out before it ever provides commercially viable power.